Welcome back to the Gadget NVA series 3D modeling. Um, uh, we're, the, the objective today is we're going to create what's called uh, uh, a set of shingles. Actually, really a pattern of shingles for a lean to for a porch for an old cabin. You could use this for scales for a character, like a scaly type character, but mainly we're concentrating on log cabin type theme with cedar shingles on a on a roof. A um, couple things I want to mention is that uh, this tutorial is a little bit more advanced. Uh, we're going to deal with what's, what's called uh, graphite modeling tools, a new feature, uh, enhanced feature from uh, from 3D Studio Max. So basically in front of you, you see a typical grid. And what we're going to do is just do a simple primitive 3D box from the creation channel. And uh, now I'm going to hit F fun F4, function key 4, so you can see the polygons. You really need to see the uh, the edges. Now, a couple of things I want to mention is that uh, um, Max has introduced uh, uh, this new feature called Graphic Modeling Tools, and there's a lot of enhancements in it. And uh, But first, we have to collapse this to an edible poly, this primitive box. And one of the things I want to demonstrate to you is tessellation, how you break up a polygon with really cool technique. Um, if you basically roll up all these parameter roll-ups, and under Edible Poly you have a lot of different um, options. And we don't cover a lot of these, I probably use about 80% of these options, but, uh, or, and if you go under Edible Poly, sorry, Edible Geometry, there's your typical tessellate. And if I hit function key 2, you can see what happens. It breaks into quads. Um, now, this is just a simple grid or array. Um, it's not staggered like you would see shingles. So I want to undo that a couple times and go back to my normal one polygon. And tessellate's located under <clears throat> edible poly. There's also mesh movie, which you can also subdivide your polygons. But one, of the one, one of the tessellate I'm going to use here I'm going to name this, by the way, Porch Roof, <clears throat> is under the Graphite Modeling Tools. And there's a lot of different options under Free from Graphite Modeling Tools. Polygon model Modeling Modified Selection, one, which we're going to cover today. And uh, there's Edit, um, there's Geometry, Polygons, dealing with loops and subdivisions. And under Subdivisions, there's your same tessellate. So if I click on here, you can shift or click for settings. I'm just going to click it again and glance. So again, you're going from the old route down here to the new tessellate. So I thought I'd mention that. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is that this graphite modeling tool selection has a lot of neat features. Um, one of the ones is called generate topology. Topology allows you to adjust um, the control the way, way an object is subdivided and how the vertices and edges and polygons look and there's many different styles if you look there's the bricks type style which we're going to use for the shingles there's haphazard different styles and and if you want some randomized mosaics or floors or it's a really cool way to do patterns it's not very you know we don't use it all the time it's like one of those things you use once a month but in this case it's pretty neat and what we can do um, is take procedural brick and you need one edge to be selected so I'm going to select one edge uh, in edge mode in edge poly, edge poly and voila I've got a pattern for my shingles it actually looks like shingles you could actually texture this and away you go um, you could add some bump mapping and make it look like a nice um, roof and uh, I mean you're done I mean it's that easy for a roof problem is, is that I mean, I'm, I've got an old log cabin I'm dealing with, and I, I'm using cedar shingles, which are pretty thick, and I really want to over-exaggerate the uh, the uh, the shingle bump bump along each edge. It's kind of tricky. Um, you can use this as a template, but basically, in a sense, this shingle here that I'm highlighting would go underneath these shingles. Okay, so a couple of different ways you can approach this. Um, and I want to use the graphic modeling tools to to show the power of them. If I go in edge mode, 
And I just want to select all these edges here. If you go under Graphic Modeling Tools under Modified Selection, Similar, watch this. What it does, it adds to the current sub-selection and all the edges are, are going to be selected. Except it didn't work really well. Try a different. I want all the similar edges, there we go, that are, that are going this way and uh, <coughs> along the y-axis. Now it did grab, no, that's just the selector. Um, so it grabbed all the similar edges along here. Now you could do a edge extrude, and what it would do um, would bring the edges up. For the most part, it grabbed a few other ones, but and then I've just exaggerated here. You can move these over and create your shingles, and then you really don't need these polygons here. So you can actually go into polygon mode and grab these polygons. Okay. And again, you use the modified similar and just delete those, and you've got your edges. Okay, that's a one way to do a shingle pretty pretty quick. And you could texture that, but it's got no thickness. It's pretty, you know. Uh, but you never know where you use that. You use a create a vent. A lot of neat, a lot of neat. You know, you got to fix up a few things here. But I'm going to undo a couple times. Go back to my original um, uh, type. I'm going to do some old school stuff, and uh, I'm going to create another box. Okay, so and just make let's say a different color. Let's make it. <clears throat> I don't know. Let's make it uh, just a little darker brown here. Okay. So consider that as a physical cedar shingle. Now, what's great about this grid is if you've got alignment here. So I want to adjust the box to the right length and width. And if you look at it, just make it a little, you've got yourself a cedar shingle, okay? And I mean, it's, it's following, it's underneath that one. Problem is you need to create um, a realistic shingle that is angled as, as if it was installed. So what I'm gonna do is just first convert this to an edible poly, go in the pivot, bring the pivot to the end, and rotate it a bit. Now what's great about um, a roof construction, and um, you're going to have an angle like this, and typically your whole thing is going to be rotated like a porch roof, right? So that's typical. Now one thing you have to know, we're in view mode now, and when you're moving things in this mode, notice in view mode it goes left and right. You don't want ha that happen, so you want to work in what's called the local mode, and that'll move down the roof. So now I got this shingle. Just bring it down. Make a copy by holding the shift key. I've got this shingle. And then I got this shingle covered. And leave a little bit of gap. And again, this shingle here might, because I'm still in locomote, I'm just going to move it just above the other ones. So now I've got my shingle roof. So you can just make that a pattern. Um, what I would do is just call this shingle. Make sure you're naming all your objects again. And then attach your other ones. And then you've got a really neat pattern as one shingle color group. Never group polygons, group objects rather. Um, for the sake of animators out there, uh, um, when you're animating, bringing game level ready models, grouping causes a lot of issues. So now that you've got a pattern here, um, you can actually copy this and bring it down. Make sure, Use your guide. Now just to, if you want to, just make this invisible and use this one here as a template. Okay, and that's why it's there. So just drag this down and voila, make an instance. So if you ever have any changes you want to do in the original, they are there. So that template can be used for your roof. Um, and then you don't need the old one. Or just hide this. Just delete it for now. <coughs> delete that one. Take the grid off so you can see. 
So again, these are invisible, Alt X, and then you've got your porch roof. And uh, you can just copy these templates over and, and uh, you got your shingle roof. Anyways, that's another detail for uh, log cabins and to create a realistic type uh, uh, pattern for roof construction. Thank you, and that's it from Gadget MDA.